This is not advice. I'm not your advisor. Still got some scotch, so let's keep going. Understanding 401k contributions and early payouts. I've been full-time at my current company for almost two years now. You hope to be out of this place sometime soon using your degree. You're doing some reading, you're trying to understand them. Your company's changing brokers and they're auto-enrolling you. Your employer says your employer matches up to 4% of your eligible compensation. When you contribute, okay, so they give you 2% if you put in 4%. Yeah, you should definitely get this. Uh, you didn't set up a 401k because it was supposed to be a pit stop, but you hung around. Okay, that's fine. Your questions are based on the company contributions. It means I need to contribute 4% to my 401k in order to take full advantage of the employer contributions. That is exactly what that says. Secondly, let's say you leave in the summer. You're reading that supposedly if the amount is low enough, companies just pay out a 401k. Something like less than 5k. Uh, that's standard, but it's certainly not a requirement. Uh, and really, it's like you're being kicked out. They're not like paying it out to do you a favor. Is this typically true or something you can request? Yeah, you can always request a distribution, but it's probably not what you want. If this does happen. How do you go about reporting on your taxes? Um, so you'll get a you'll, you'll get a 1099. That'll be uh, so it's a tax form. You'll get that in the mail or uh, electronically and that will be something that you'll report it'll say right on it uh, where you report it but yeah you've got to include that all it's all gonna be taxable income uh, and there's gonna be a penalty uh, and it sounds like you're almost certainly under 55 so there'll be an extra 10 percent penalty so if you want to avoid that penalty what you need to do is open an IRA and have that money rolled into a traditional IRA account uh, let's read the rest of it, though. I don't know if this is really foolish planning, but the idea you're having is basically to start contributing just the minimum for the maximum employer contributions. You're doing that makes sense. Leave the company and then cash out the 401k. As possible, you're not even going to get matched this year if uh, if you don't stay for the whole year, just so you know. You expect the amount to be well under 5K, but enough to be significant for you in the short term. Uh, right now, surplus money after budgeting goes to building up your savings, loan payments, and entertainment. Losing 4% of your wages. Yeah, it depends how they do the match. Some places do the match like every single pay period. You see it go in. Um, some places don't do it to the end of the year, and I'm not sure if you'd be entitled to it if you don't stay for the entire year. My guess is you would, but I, I don't actually know. Um, but yeah, if, you, if you're going to spend the money and you're going to get the match, it's better to put the 4% away, get the 2% match, pull it out and spend it, than it would be to never put any in. But if you could, it's probably better to put the 4% in, get the 2% match, and keep it in an IRA. I mean, if you got some really high cost debt, maybe that's not actually a better option. Maybe you should take it out to pay the debt. Um, I don't know, you'll have to feel it out. Take, taking money out early and then paying taxes on it and the 10% penalty, it's pretty inefficient, but uh, you should get the match. You wanna get the match, even if you're gonna get it out and pay the penalties, the, the free 2% match uh, is gonna make up for the for the extra cost too much income for an ira that's a good problem to have 26 you're making around 150 you had a 401k through your employer which you max out nice job you were gonna set up an ira but it looks like you're making too much yep unless you set up a backdoor ira you don't really set up a backdoor ira you, well neither here nor there i get what you're saying Seems a little complicated and you don't want to screw yourself. It is a little complicated. It's not that hard, but it's a little complicated. What's your best course of action? It's just sitting in a checking account. Can I do a Roth 401k in addition to your employee 401k? No, 
No, you cannot. Um, the 401ks are subject to the same limits. You can only do one or the other. Um, yeah, I mean, might be worth your time to figure out the backdoor Roth IRA, but if you don't want to do that, you can just open a brokerage account anywhere. Um, you know, the big brokerage firms are Charles Schwab, Fidelity Vanguard. There's also like a Wealthfront Betterment if you want to have it do the investing for you. And you just open a taxable brokerage account. You probably want to do some research to understand the tax ramifications. So every time you're getting dividends or realizing gains, those are going to be taxable, which is different from retirement accounts. But yeah, that's the thing to set up. Um, I wouldn't fall for anyone trying to like sell you a life insurance policy or anything like that. Gifting a non-relative college tuition assistance. Strategies. That's nice of you. I want to financially help an 18-year-old freshman who's not your son with his college costs. Is he your daughter? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, not a huge amount. Maybe $1,000 a year. He's a great kid. and putting himself through college. You want to support him a little. Should I just give him a check? Or there are any other strategies that would be tax beneficial to you? Uh, you're not doing it for the tax benefits, but there are some. You might as well utilize them. Totally agree. Are there any tax concerns for him as well? Uh, no and no. There is nothing you can do that's beneficial to you when you're gifting. Well, I'm going to walk that back in a second. You're not going to get any deductions for it. You only get those for gifting to charities. Um, he's not going to have any tax concerns either. The one thing you could do is a little complicated. So maybe you don't want to do it. Giving a check would be fine. It'd be You're not giving up a lot. But if you got some appreciated property, like let's say you've got some stock that's gone up, you own a few shares of Apple in a taxable account, just a brokerage account. You could take $1,000 of that appreciated stock, maybe it's three or four shares of Apple, give it to him. Don't sell it. Give the shares to him. He gets the shares. He sells the shares. You've now gotten rid of an asset that had some taxable gain kind of built up. You had some unrealized capital gain. You've gotten rid of that. You don't have to pay any tax on it. He sells it. He he will have to pay tax on it. So his cost basis is whatever your cost basis was. So he will have some capital gain to report. But as long as he's uh, not in the kitty tax, as long as he's supporting himself, and it sounds like he is, if you really meant putting himself through college, um, he's going to be in the 0% long-term capital gains bracket. So he'd sell it. He would have to report it on the tax return, but he's not going to owe any taxes. He's going to pay 0% on it. Um, so that's something you can consider if he's not actually supporting himself from like the IRS's point of view. The strategy probably doesn't work. Maybe it doesn't work as well. Maybe it still works a little bit. Um, but that's a reasonable thing to do. And if you do that, you should explain it to him because he won't understand it. Um, but that's the one way I can think of that you could uh, – you could do something clever with the taxes. So good luck, and uh, that's nice of you to help him out.